On today's show, the latest in the Pelicans' Brandon Ingram situation. Are the Pelicans able to extend and keep Brandon Ingram potentially on a discounted deal, or do they have to look to trade him, and what would a possible return look like for Ingram at this point? Plus, the Pels are still missing a center. What are they going to be able to do about that? It's all coming up on today's Locked on NBA. You are Locked On NBA, your daily NBA podcast. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. What's up and welcome to another edition of Locked On NBA, the biggest stories with the local experts. I'm your host, Jackson Gatlin, also host of Locked On Rockets right here on the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Now today's episode is brought to you by FanDuel. Look, I love sports. I love them so much. I never really want them to stop, right? But when you got playoffs and stuff winding down and then you get fewer and fewer games and the sports maybe aren't sportsing the way you want them to. Look, FanDuel lets you keep the sports going whenever you want. All you have to do is open the app and dream up bets anytime that you're in the mood. And this summer, FanDuel is hooking up all customers with a boost or a bonus daily. That's right. There's something for everyone every day, all summer long. Right now, you can head over to FanDuel.com and take a look at the outright betting favorites to win the title this upcoming NBA season. The boss and Celtics favorites to repeat at plus 300 then in second place you got the OKC Thunder at plus 750 and holding down third place the Denver Nuggets at plus 850 as well as the Philadelphia 76 or so for all those odds and so much more head on over to FanDuel.com and start making the most out of your summer FanDuel official sports betting partner of the NBA Joining us now is the host of Locked on Pelicans and Locked on NBA, Jake Madison. You can track down wherever you listen to your podcasts or on YouTube. Just search Locked on Pelicans. And Jake, we need your help to kind of help us break down this Brandon Ingram situation for the New Orleans Pelicans. Look, Ingram wants to get paid. The Pelicans don't exactly want to pay him a max level contract. So let's start right here. How much is Ingram the player really worth? Is there a world where he maybe takes less than the max in order to stay in New Orleans, you know, long term, you know, he might have to, right? It's not just that the Pelicans don't want to give him a max deal, which is, you know, max extension four years. It comes to two hundred eight million dollars. So an average annual value of fifty two million dollars. It's not just the Pelicans don't want to pay him that. It's probably every team doesn't want to pay him that because you're not just trading for Brandon Ingram, right? If you trade for him with one year left on his deal, you know, you have to give him a max contract is the only guaranteed way to get him to stay. And if teams wanted to do that, and there's some natural trade partners out there, the Cavaliers make a ton of sense, but they don't seem to be making an offer. He would be traded by now if teams wanted to pay him that kind of value around the league. So you could run into a situation where a year from now, if he plays out this final year of his deal with New Orleans, hits free agency next year. We've seen this the past couple of years. Free agency isn't like what it once was with tons of players changing teams. It's usually extending trades or signing trades situations like that on the open market there's not a ton of cap space Paul George is very much an outlier situation this past summer this is how Brandon Ingram who could get paid another 30 to 36 million dollars what he's making right now ends up maybe getting squeezed and having to take close to a mid-level exception kind of deal something along those lines so yeah he wants to get paid and he feels his value is higher but I think he definitely needs to kind of take a look around the league and go oh, I need to maybe kind of adjust my expectations a little bit. It, what is there a number that you have in your mind that you think that the Pelicans and, and Ingram could potentially settle on aside from that that max value contract? Yeah, I, you know, I think there's going to be some sort of an agreement here. I think he's going to realize he doesn't have that kind of money out there for him. Wayne and the Pelicans don't want to just lose him for nothing potentially in free agency next season or even trade him at the trade deadline when he's a short-term rental then. So it's in their best interest to give him some sort of contract extension. You know, I, I think there's two ways you can look at this. It could be a full four-year extension at maybe an average value of around $38 million. He's making 36 now. This is a talented player. Like, don't get me wrong. This is a guy who can go out and give you 25, five and five on any given night and sometimes more than that, but he's such a mid range artist and doesn't fit around Zion Williamson. And when you look at him, his three point attempts have gone down basically every year he's been in new Orleans trending in the wrong direction for a league that values shooting almost above all other things. So I, I think that's going to squeeze his market a little bit. That could mean he comes back to new Orleans on a four year extension. That's just much lower. It also could just mean a more front loaded one or two year deal, right? Like you could do a two year extension that's in the 40 something million dollars 
dollar range, I think, could be a realistic thing. It buys New Orleans time. It makes him, when the salary cap's only going to go up 10% or so every year, look maybe more attractive to teams in the future. And we might end up seeing one of those two scenarios play out. You know, it's really tough because I feel like Ingram is kind of one of those players who's obviously so incredibly talented, right? But he's like on the precipice of like, you don't really want to pay a player that like of his talent level that much. You don't want to pay him that max deal, but he's obviously worth more than the mid-level or more than even, you know, a $30 million deal. So you got to try and find that sweet spot that satisfies both parties. Now, you mentioned earlier, right, uh, you know, potentially finding a trade partner for Brandon Ingram. You threw out the Cavs as a potential option there. What does that look like if they were to explore the idea of moving him? I, I feel like the logistics of moving a guy, you know, you talked about obviously whatever team he potentially does get traded to, any potential suitors, they would have to be, you know, kind of undergoing the same thought process as the Pelicans of do you want to extend him at that max number? Are you willing to give up value for a what is effectively, at least right now, a one year rental of Brandon Ingram? Yeah, that's, I mean, that's the reason he hasn't been dealt yet. The Pelicans have been calling around the league. I think they realized this past season that his fit with Zion Williamson like, just wasn't there. And then while Zion didn't play in the postseason and Ingram did, he had a rough series in that sweep against the Oklahoma City Thunder with Lou Dort basically locking him down. You could argue his value is the lowest right now, which is why maybe New Orleans shouldn't trade him. But you look at a team like the Cleveland Cavaliers, and I think they make sense for a ton of reasons, right? They just gave Donovan Mitchell that extension. They just, like the other day today, whenever we're recording this, extended Evan Mobley, right? They still have Darius Garland. They need to figure that situation out. They still have Jared Allen. New Orleans has a glaring center-sized hole on its roster right now. A Brandon Ingram for Jared Allen and Max Struess kind of deal probably makes sense for both parties, given that the Cavaliers don't really have a ton of wing depth. And in the East, you kind of need that right now to compete with the Boston Celtics. But... It seems like they want to kind of keep their core four together for the time being with a new head coach coming in to try and figure that out. You've seen kind of cap space in other teams that I think could have been suitors for Brandon Ingram dry up, right? You know, you had teams like the Orlando Magic who, you know, per FanDuel were the number one team most likely to like acquire Brandon Ingram probably into their cap space while sending a guy like Wendell Carter Jr. back to New Orleans. That's no longer an option. You look at some of these other teams around the league and it just, you struggle to maybe see a deal come into place. We heard the Sacramento Kings, but they went after DeMar DeRozan. So that likely rules it out. So there's, you know, one or two teams, I think that could make sense. If the Warriors don't get Lowry marketing, should they maybe try and pivot towards Brandon Ingram? I think that's a team that makes sense too. He Ingram would be cheaper to acquire than marketing would. So that's an option as well. But all of a sudden you start to look around the league and go, oh, there's not as many teams interested as we thought. And th this is one of those things where the market could open up quite a bit more for Brandon Ingram at the trade deadline as opposed to the offseason. Because right now is where every team feels confident and happy in their team. Everybody's the healthiest they've ever been in their careers. All that good stuff. All the all the different an anecdotes we get every NBA season. But at the tr at the trade deadline, right, you might luck into a team that feels like they're they're a Brandon Ingram away from making a title push, and that's where you could maybe get you know extract maximum value for him instead of you know selling low, like you mentioned with uh, his his poor kind of postseason performance. You mentioned a couple different times now. Obviously, the gaping hole at the five spot for the Pelicans. That's kind of, that's clearly a glaring issue on this roster, one that they're going to have to try and figure out going into the season. Mentioned, you know, potentially a Jarrett Allen trade there if the Cavaliers are potential suitors for Brandon Ingram. It, it keeps screaming at me. I feel like this is a kind of two birds, one stone situation with the Brandon Ingram, but if they're not able to factor Brandon Ingram into a potential trade to get a starting caliber center on their roster, who are some other targets out there that you think would make sense that the Pelicans are either kind of reportedly interested in or targets that just make a lot of sense looking, you know, outside looking in? You know, I think there's some names that make sense. I think it's tough to try and figure out a deal. You know, one of the reasons that the Pelicans are in this situation is the DeJounte Murray trade that happened you know, before all of this kind of free agency stuff started where they didn't get back Onyeka Okongwu or Clint Capella because reportedly the Hawks weren't interested in paying Brandon Ingram, right? So th they're kind of in this situation. And in that deal, they had to trade a lot of like the mid-tier salary they had, right? Larry Nance Jr. making around $12 million a year. You had Dyson Daniels making $8 million a year. And so like they don't have a ton of tradable pieces like that, which makes it kind of tough to figure out a deal, to be perfectly honest with you. I think the team 
team that makes the most sense is still the Orlando Magic and Wendell Carter Jr. I think he fits what New Orleans would like. He can shoot the three a little bit. He gives them rim protection. He started. He's come off the bench. You can use him as, in a variety of different ways. He can defend in space enough. I think that's a guy that they would ideally be targeting. I don't exactly know how to make that deal work anymore when it comes to that sort of thing. New Orleans does have about a $12 million traded player exception from the Jonas Valanciunas signing trade with him going to the Washington Wizards. That could be a way to kind of absorb someone in there. There's Walker Kessler from the Utah Jazz, who is, I don't think, an amazing option, but he fits into one of their two traded player exceptions. If you trade a future first-round pick, could you just get him and then plug him into the starting lineup? He at least can block shots, even if he's not really a talented offensive player. That's another name that I think would make sense for New Orleans as well. Ultimately, what happens with the Brandon Ingram situation? Will he still be a Pelican come opening night of the season, or will be will he be on his way elsewhere? You're going to have us covered for all of that and so much more over at Locked On Pelicans. Jake, thanks for stopping by Locked On NBA with me. Of course. Thanks for having me on.